Welcome to the Gifts Club. Today we are exploring the age of employee freedom, working hours, holidays and location. It's a hot topic. Are contracts old fashioned? And should we allow employees to control their working day, the number of days of annual leave and where they work? And how can a company reward or recognise employees who perhaps can do that themselves? And how does the company benefit from this type of agreement? So with me, I have invited Will Stewart to explore this. Will has a strong retail background in buying positions and launched his company in 2014, the Point 1888, which is the next generation of brand licensing, matching brands with retailers and manufacturers to create powerful new products. Will's company is not just disrupting his industry, but it is also leading the way for companies to actually offer better work-life balance for employees which some would say is going too far, or um, is to an extreme and even a bit taboo, but it works. And I'm questioning Will on how and why. So it's great to chat to you, Will. Thanks so much for your time. Hello everybody. And yeah, thank you for inviting me on to uh, the vidcast. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to chatting to you. You run your business with a very relaxed culture and give your employees a lot of freedom without the contractual small print. So firstly, can you explain how that works? And then secondly, what are the benefits to you as an employer? Okay, so um, yes, it might be relaxed in some ways and we do have employment contracts. So we're not, uh, we're not a completely hippie focused business, I would say. Um, so yeah, we look after people, but when I, I started a business that I wanted to um, make a big positive impact and make a change to the way things, the, you know, the way things were. And the big one for me was, you know, work doesn't work. And I think if you see, you know, people as they used to travel into, you know, big big cities and work nine to five and commute and all these sorts of things, I, I was never a fan of that myself. So I wanted to start a business that was built on purpose. Um, and there's two aspects to that. One is um, making a positive difference. So we give 11% of our profits to charity um, and that helps give the whole team a purpose in that we're not just working really hard to make money, we're actually working really hard to, to help change people's lives. But the more important one and the one that's really, I think, driven our business and attracted the best talent to our business in our industry um, is that we, you know, we give our employees a life work balance. And what that means is they work when they want, uh, whatever days they want, whatever time they want to work, um, and from wherever they want to work. Um, and they have unlimited holiday as well. Um, we call it ultra flexibility. And it's built around this life comes first policy. So people talk about getting a right work-life balance. And the irony in that is, is screams out at me in that work comes first. So fit your life around work. And what I wanted to offer people was we will fit your work around your life in that you know, life is busy particularly for parents um, and for particularly for people that are, are working parents but anyone who has any hobbies or you know family members that they need to see or friends that live in you know far flung places um, we will fit the work around that and it's the most incredible benefit for practically everyone that's joined this business um, so that's the, the core central policy of, um, you know, the people element of our business. And, you know, when I started, it was it's quite easy to offer something like that because <clears throat> it was only me and then a couple of people joined and, you know, people don't really see it as a, as a you know, it's not necessarily defining at that point. But as we've grown and when you realise you're employing people that are really, really good, and one of the most important things they talk about is the fact that they have this, you know, life work balance. And you can talk to anyone in my team and they will all say it's one of the most important things. And I remember talking to people when I started and saying, yeah, we're going to do this ultra flexibility. And everybody said, no, no, you can't. It's too risky. You can't, you know, people won't work. They won't be, you know, they won't, you, you can't, you just can't do it. <clears throat> It annoyed me. It really annoyed me. And the more people said it wouldn't work, the, you know, for me, that's a red flag. So it's like, well, I'll, I'll prove it works. 
And the big difference now is that, you know, we're five and a half years in and we've got an incredible team and it, and it does work. It absolutely works. And it helps us stand out completely from, from the crowd. How do you reward your employees um, when they seem to be able to have that under their own control? What do you do as a, as a, as a business? Is that, is that as flexible as your sort of culture is? Or do you have specific ways of recognising and rewarding? Yeah, I, I think re being recognised or rewarded or highlighted in front of your colleagues is one of the most important things for employee engagement. Um, and just employee satisfaction and ultimately uh, employee happiness. And the, you know, look, time is more valuable than money to most people. And you realize that more as you get older, um, but you know, generally being able to have control over your time, it's the biggest reward. So we have a very good base level in that you know, people have control over their time. In terms of rewarding, so we do a, I call the team legends that have joined me because I do feel just so chuffed that they've joined me on this journey. So they're legends to me. So we have a legend of the month um, competition, uh, if you want, um, where the team gets to vote uh, who they think has made the most legendary, outstanding contribution this month. Um, our, we've created a new system um, in, uh, our sales system which is all based around this big lego figure race thing which won't make any sense but i'll have to send you a whatsapp you some pictures or something but it allows a very uh physical and visceral process where every team member has a little lego figure and they move along this uh, map system thing and the sales meeting is really important because no business exists without sales we all need money to survive so we created a system where each team member gets to stand up and you know, move figures along a board and actually physically show progress. And I think a lot of what happens in sales teams and in businesses generally is you don't see what's going on, particularly if you're all working from home. I don't know the calls that someone's having or the progress they're making to when suddenly something appears. And we want to document and, and celebrate this process of all these things going on and sharing it in a way that the whole team can see, you know, what's going on and giving, you know, the team member the opportunity to, to stand up and, you know, it's not show off, but it's just to share how much they've been doing. The other biggie is um, the charity contributions that we make are all nominated by the team. So when we do our charity allocation, each team member gets, you know, they can choose which charities we nominate and they put in proposals and say, well, I'd like to give a thousand pounds to this, you know, uh, school or this charity or this cause that's making a big difference to me. And then we bought a big, uh, like a big check thing uh, on, on uh, eBay, I think. And they get to go and give the, the check at the same time as the money. So it, allows them to really live the purpose and realise the difference they're making. Thank you, Will. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having me on.